Ever heard the story about how Muhammad's best Quran reciter abandoned his religion and became an apostate? How could this happen? Let's go through the background. According to Muslim scholars today, there is only one Quran perfectly preserved since the time of Muhammad. If anyone disagrees with a single word of the Quran, he's not a real Muslim. And there is a general consensus between the Sahaba and the scholars and at tabi'een and everybody that there is only one copy of the Quran. And anyone who has a doubt that any word of the Quran is not from it, or the Quran is missing any part, is a disbeliever. Anyone who doubts a word or even a letter is not a Muslim. Interestingly, when we go back to the companions of Muhammad, we find that they had all kinds of disagreements about the Quran. Take Abdullah ibn Masud. How important was ibn Masud? I'll let Muhammad answer that question. Sahih al Bukhari, 3808. Narrated Masruk, Abdullah bin Masud was mentioned before Abdullah bin Amr, who said, That is a man I still love, as I heard the Prophet saying, Learn the recitation of the Quran from four. From Abdullah bin Masud, he started with him, Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hud Haifa, Muad bin Jabal, and Ubay bin Kab. So Muhammad gave his followers a list of his best Quran reciters, and Abdullah ibn Masud was first on his list. And that's a problem, because when Muhammad died and his followers began putting together their own versions of the Quran, Abdullah ibn Masud didn't even agree with other Muslims on which chapters were supposed to be in the Quran. According to ibn Masud, Surah 1, Surah 113, and Surah 114 aren't supposed to be in the Quran. But we'll talk about the dispute over chapters in another video, because I want to make this as simple as possible for our Muslim friends. Muslim scholars say that you're a disbeliever if you doubt a single word of the one and only Quran. Anyone who doubts a word or even a letter is not a Muslim. And yet, Muhammad's own companions had such doubts. Here's an example that we find over and over again in Islam's most trusted sources. Sahih al-Bukhari, 4944. Narrated Ibrahim. The companions of Abdullah bin Masud came to Abi ad darda and before they arrived at his home, he looked for them and found them. Then he asked them, Who among you can recite the Quran as Abdullah recites it? They replied, All of us. He asked, Who among you knows it by heart? They pointed at Alkama. Then he asked Alkama, How did you hear Abdullah bin Masud reciting Surat al-Layl, the night? Alkama recited, by the male and the female. Abu ad darda said, I testify that I heard the prophet reciting it likewise, but these people want me to recite it by him who created male and female, but by Allah, I will not follow them. Now, what are these guys talking about? Well, they're talking about Surah 92, which in today's Quran, begins with Allah swearing an oath by the night as it envelops, by the day as it appears in brightness, by him who created male and female. Certainly, your efforts and deeds are diverse, different in aims and purposes. Verse 3 says, by him who created male and female. Who created male and female? Allah. So Allah is swearing by himself. He swears by the night, and by the day, and then by the creator of male and female, i.e. himself. But in the hadith we just read, Muhammad's companion Abu Darda remembers it a different way. So he goes to the students of Ibn Masud, the students who learned the recitation of the Quran from Ibn Masud, just as Muhammad commanded. Abu Darda asks them to recite Surah 92. And when Ibn Masud's student Alkama recites verse 3, he doesn't say, by him who created male and female. He simply says, by the male and the female. So in Ibn Masud's version, Allah swears by the male 
and the female, not by the creator of the male and the female. Ibn Masud learned this surah directly from Muhammad himself, and he recited it differently than Muslims today recite it. Here a Muslim might respond, well, maybe Ibn Masud memorized it incorrectly. But there are two problems here. One, you'll recall that Ibn Masud was first on Muhammad's list of his four top reciters. So if the best of the best couldn't get the Quran right, why do Muslims keep telling us that the Quran was so easy to memorize? Two, we have independent confirmation here from another companion. When Abu Ad-Darda hears Ibn Masud's version, he says, I testify that I heard the Prophet reciting it likewise, but these people want me to recite it by him who created male and female. But by Allah, I will not follow them. Abu Ad-Darda also learned the surah directly from Muhammad, and he says that the way Muslims recite the Quran today is wrong, and that he won't follow them. So, Muhammad's top Quran reciter, Ibn Masud, and Muhammad's companion Abu Ad-Darda, who was one of the first four people to collect the Quran, disagreed with today's Quran, and they both learned their version directly from Muhammad. What do Muslims say about differences in different versions of the Quran? Oh, these are just different dialects, but the meaning is exactly the same. No. The only way swearing by God and swearing by male and female would be the same would be if the male and the female were God. Are you Muslims willing to go that far in your desperate attempts to pretend that your book has been perfectly preserved? How can Muhammad's companions make it any more clear that they disagreed with the Quran you have today? Putting all of this together, we can finally see how Muhammad's top Quran reciter, Abdullah ibn Masud, became an apostate. If you read the Muslim sources, putting the Quran together was an extremely difficult and sloppy process. They couldn't agree on which chapters were supposed to be in the Quran. Entire chapters were lost because Muhammad's companions were too lazy to recite them. Large passages were lost because the only people who had them memorized died in battle. Verses were eaten by a sheep. The third caliph, Uthman, had to burn everyone's copies of the Quran in order to cover up all the differences. Preserving the Quran was like a train crashing into a dumpster, leaving us with a combination of a dumpster fire and a train wreck. But over time, Muslim scholars and apologists lied about this more and more until we get down to our time and find them telling us that even the slightest doubt about a single word of the Quran makes you an unbeliever. Anyone who doubts a word or even a letter is not a Muslim. And that's how Muhammad's top Quran reciter became an apostate. For 14 centuries, Muslims have been rewriting their history and revising their religion. But they've rewritten and revised so much that Muhammad's own companions no longer qualify as Muslims. Muslim scholars and apologists today have built their religion upon a lie. They're so desperate to keep the lie going that they're willing to turn Muhammad's closest companions into liars and apostates. What's amazing here is that Muslims just don't seem to care. They love the lie about the Quran more than they love the companions who compiled the Quran. So now, modern Muslims are calling the first generation of Muslims apostates. As sad and pathetic as that is, it sure is fun to watch. Please, Muslims, tell us more about your perfectly preserved book. And after you tell us all about this miracle of the Quran, be sure to watch the videos in this playlist since you know so much, maybe you can explain why Muhammad's own companions kept making up stories about the Quran being corrupted. Why would they say that about a book that's been perfectly preserved?